Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well today. Welcome to today's Chelsea News video. Chelsea News, the series where I look across all football news media, across the vast ocean of the reliable information on the internet, and I present to you what the news headlines are saying. Do not shoot as a messenger man. The only thing I can do is present to you the news and offer you my opinion about said news. And today we're going to be talking about a few things. Two goalkeepers that have been linked to Chelsea before. More news has surfaced regarding them. Gianluigi Donnarumma, as well as Andre Onana of Ajax. And the two outfield players we will be talking about today are Philippe Coutinho, one that won't seem to go away, that's still staying in the headlines, who apparently wants to go to Chelsea. He wants the Chelsea move, apparently, so saith news reports, as well as N'Golo Kante. Apparently Chelsea have put on a price tag for the Frenchman of just 70 million euros, which people thought they would maybe get twice as much as that, but obviously these are exceptional times, prices are being slashed. He's 29, he's constantly been injured of late, maybe a little bit of reflection, Still seems like a rather small amount though. And there's actually a rumoured potential swap deal regarding both Coutinho and Kante. I wonder how people are going to feel about that. Still, it's a lot to talk about and I want to run through it today and offer you guys my opinion on said subjects. <laughs> we can speculate what's going to happen to Chelsea Football Club moving forwards if the transfer window opens, if football returns, if we can make it through. Alright, this is the part of the video where I remind you there watching that you are most probably not subscribed. Oh yes, that's the truth. The majority of my viewership come and watch my videos, might return watch more videos, but they do not subscribe to Football Therapy, which is a cruel fate if you ask me. So why don't you just take a second, subscribe, hit that bell notifications icon because that is important and you can support me who's making daily content for you by liking the video. All right, let's get into it. Boom, Angola Kante. Let's talk about the World Cup winning Frenchman who's won multitude of awards, whether it's Premier Leagues, individual awards, etc. We all know him about this tool, very good at football, really good at making tackles. Huge talking point in football and more so the Chelsea fan base. Play him as a lone pivot. He's never played as a lone pivot. Play him where he's supposed to play him. What, in a midfield two, in a four-man midfield? I don't know, just back somewhere doing defending. You know that guy. You would be forgiven for speculating or assuming that we, as football fans around the world, have seen the best of N'Golo Kante. Sure, he's only 29, but he's a type of player that relies on his stamina and his engine and basically not being injured to do his best work. He was made of granite, he'd never stop running, and suddenly he has stopped running and he's injured and he's, you know, touching 30 years old. This 30 year old or near 30 year old player could still fetch 70 million euros in a turbulent time in a broken transfer market. Would you do it? I can see the theory in doing it, but I can completely understand why some fans would want to keep N'Golo Kante. So I'm going to park myself firmly on this fence and say that. Clubs like Real Madrid and Paris Saint-Germain are both very, very interested in N'Golo Kante. Still, I do believe he'd do better work out in either France or Spain in comparison to the physicality of the Premier League if he does indeed continue to have recurring injuries. I see him doing better work out there. So both Paris and Madrid are calling him and apparently so are Barcelona. Like I said, this rumoured price tag of 70 million euros is probably near about half the amount a few months ago people would have asked for N'Golo Kante, perhaps before everything that's happened in the world has happened. So you think maybe 100 million euros, 70 million euros doesn't seem like very much at all. But still, it's still twice as much as Chelsea paid for N'Golo Kante. And they've since won a Premier League, a Europa League, an FA Cup. They've done all right. They've done all right since buying him. And in between, he won himself a lovely little World Cup. So they double their money. They win a bunch of titles. And like I said earlier, a few minutes ago, arguably saw the best out of him in his career. I get it. You might say Kante's got a few like decent years left in him, but I want to reiterate that I feel like the physicality and speed of the Premier League might be more damaging to the Frenchman now than perhaps 
sort of inferior leagues. I don't want to say inferior, but I just did say inferior. So ha, inferior leagues like France or Spain. <laughs> So there's that, there's being rumoured that he might go, there's like ideas throwing around that although Frank Lampard loves him, perhaps his partic particular type of philosophy doesn't really suit N'Golo Kante because he wants to play with the ball, N'Golo Kante does his best work without the ball. You catch where I'm going here, like maybe he'd just sit back in a two for PSG and wait to pick up the ball in transition and literally everyone else plays forward. I don't know, point being, it might be the right thing to sell him, even for as little as 70 million euros, because next summer it might be worth 30 million euros. Do you see what I'm saying? Now we know PSG wanted him his hometown, we know Real Madrid wanted him, Zinedine Zidane's a big fan of him, but Barcelona's a new one because that's because of the new reports coming out saying, this is such a like, meh news report, isn't it? The swap deals. Whenever one club's interested in a player and there might be a reverse interest for another player. The swap deal headline always comes out. And 99.9% .9 of the time it's nonsense, but I'm still gonna tell you guys about the swap deal that's being touted for N'Golo Kante and Philippe Coutinho. Mundo Deportivo has reported on this potential, and I say potential <laughs> with not much confidence, swap deal between N'Golo Kante and Philippe Coutinho, but they've also reported that the Brazilian Philippe Coutinho wants Chelsea move. God, that was broken down. Caveman way of saying it. Would want the Chelsea move. He's interested in the Chelsea move. He likes the idea of moving to Chelsea. Now, the Coutinho news has been cycloning around in football media for a while now. He's split opinion. A lot of people think it's a nonsense news story. A lot of people think it's a legit news story. Some people think it's just his agent trying to mix up a storm, try and get him into the Premier League, make some money, get him playing football again. I've kind of spoken about how I feel about him. I feel he's an excellent player. He's, his numbers in the Premier League were absolutely beast. I completely understand the sort of outlook of he's not a problem position for Chelsea. I get that. He's not. He's like an attacking midfielder. Chelsea need like left backs, uh, striker. They're sort of the two main problem positions. But with Coutinho, it would kind of be an opportunist situation. Someone to help be creative between the lines against low difficult blocks, which Chelsea have suffered against so much this season, as well as being a player who can score a long range goal and curl it into the top bins to change the fortunes of a match into Chelsea's favour that kind of stuff. I did probably preference alone, as did the other people who maybe wanted Coutinho to come to the club. But we'll have to see. Deportivo are reporting a swap deal. But there's a lot more news going around that apparently he wants the Chelsea move, which is interesting. We will have to see. Meanwhile, in other football world news media, De Marzio is reporting about Gialuigi Donnarumma, the Milan a goalkeeper who's been touted for a move. What to some different clubs, one massive one being Chelsea. He's saying, I think he will leave, but there is a chance he will renew. But the, generally, he thinks he will leave Milan one year left on his deal. Milan won't get much money for him, although they will try and get way more than he's probably worth with one year left on his deal. He's been heavily touted around for a move for Chelsea. He is a very good goalkeeper. He's got so much experience at such a young age and he's just really big in goal. I know that's really reductionist and stuff, but a big, tall goalkeeper that occupies so much of the goal and has got so much experience and is still so young and it could be an opportunity to get him for 40 million euros instead of whatever they'd try and charge if he had a long contract, like 100 million euros. Probably a good target. To be honest, I know the alternative is Andre or Nana, which we'll talk about in a second. Donald Rummer would be the more high profile purchase, and it would be another, oh, another elite goalkeeper in the Premier League. I'm not sure you get the same vibes from Andre or Nana in the Premier League, even if some people prefer him. But do you get what I'm saying? So let's talk about Andre or Nana. The Keep have reported that he will cost whoever wants to buy him from Ajax. 30 million euros, which is a real good deal indeed. We've seen how good he can be against Chelsea in the Champions League last, or say last campaign, this campaign. He's a very highly rated goalkeeper and performs very, very well indeed. Now, before I just comment on whether we should get a new goalkeeper, loads of Chelsea fans do preference Andre Onana over the likes of Gianluigi Donnarumma because they've seen Onana play and he's good mates with Ziyech. He's just a good goalkeeper. He's quite young still. So I get it. They're both very, very good. I think kind of it would come down to if the club did want a new keeper, what 
deal what would be the best deal I guess so let's talk about it Kepari the Balaga has played well for Chelsea the last two games when he came back into the side but Frank Lampard might look past good recent form and think you know what mate you fell off a cliff for the majority of the season and it cost us Worst stats in Europe for a goalkeeper. No matter how much you respect some more respects his talent, he might be concerned about that happening again. I've spoken on Football Therapy about Chelsea replacing Willy Caballero with a much younger deputy who can challenge Kepa if needs be, if his form falls off again. But who knows, maybe Lampard, maybe the powers that be at Chelsea are intending on replacing Kepa, loaning out Kepa to try and regain some value to sell him or just sell him, cut a loss, who knows? We'll have to see about that. But regarding that, I wanna get your thoughts and opinions. I really wanna get the gauge of how Chelsea fans feel. Would you feel okay with Chelsea selling Kepa and buying Donnarumma or, or Nana? Get down in the comments section below and express your thoughts on that situation. And yes, I'm gonna ask it as well. Talk about N'Golo Kante, 70 million euros, 29 years old and also talk about Philippe Coutinho loan deal permanent swap deal I want to hear everyone's thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below so let me know get down there if you've enjoyed the content today guys please do like the video that means a lot to me subscribe if you're new to the channel follow me on social media at football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter that's it for me you lot enjoy the football that is not happening at the moment and I will see you later so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chuck In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby